Hey guys, it's Chief from Skull Gaming Network. Welcome to another Retro Bowl video, and today it is here. The 32-team Retro Bowl Imperialism video. Before I get too far into things, shout out to my good friend Valzi, who back in the early days of Retro Bowl, we did a couple of head-to-head -head collabs, Notre Dame versus Tennessee. He sent me a couple DMs on Twitter saying, hey, what do you think about doing an imperialism video hopping on that trend and doing it with Retro Bowl. It's not like I never would have gotten there, but I wasn't really thinking about it until he asked me if I should do that. So shout out to him. And then in terms of who I specifically drew inspiration from for the style of this video, I'm going to give credit there to Dean's World. It's his Madden NFL imperialism videos that I took inspiration from the most meaning I'm going to spin a team wheel, then I'm going to spin an arrow wheel to determine the direction. Also, the rules for all of the games in today's videos are as follows. We're playing one-minute quarters, the default difficulty for exhibition mode, with both drive directions on, and weather is completely randomized for all games. The one thing I can't do like he does, he has both teams simulate games. I'm using exhibition mode. So the team I land on, I will play as, but they will be the visiting team and they will attack whoever is randomly selected as the home team being played by the AI. Hopefully that's simple enough. Now that the intro is out of the way, let's get into the games themselves. There's going to probably be 50 rounds or more. Let's get to it. So here we go. In round one, our first team wheel spin lands on the Carolina Panthers. And the Panthers will attack pretty much due south, slightly southeast. And they will get South Carolina. In round two, we land on the Patriots. And let's see, where are the Patriots going to attack? The arrow lands to the northwest. And looking at the map, to the northwest, the Patriots claim Vermont. On to round three, and the spin for round three it lands on the Dallas Cowboys. Now, the Dallas Cowboys will attack pretty much due north, and they will get the state of Oklahoma. So, Dallas now owns Oklahoma. In round four, we land on the Buffalo Bills. I think we'll see our first game action soon. They're going to attack southeast. And since it's more east than south, the Giants cover the entire eastern border of Buffalo. So the Giants will travel to the state of New Jersey and take on the New York football Giants. We'll jump right into the gameplay as early on Buffalo gets a 29-yard touchdown. They make it 8-3. End of the first half. They kick a field goal to make it 11-3. And now at the beginning of the fourth quarter, still an 11-3 ball game. One more field goal makes it a 14-3 game. And then with just a few seconds left, Buffalo going for the dagger. They get a touchdown. They win 21-3, and they take over New York. Now in round five, the Detroit Lions most likely playing a game here and they're going to attack Northwest. They're going to attack Green Bay. So the Lions travel to Lambeau to take on the Packers. And about halfway through the first quarter, Detroit gets a touchdown. After a stop at the end of the first quarter, Detroit with the deep shot, and there's a missed tackle. The receivers to the 30, the 20, 15, 10, 5. He will not be caught. That's a 67-yard touchdown. We skip ahead. It's now 17-3. to And Detroit with about 30 seconds left. This receiver broke three tackles to get a touchdown with 21 seconds left. And the Lions will win and claim Green Bay by a score of 24-3. to Now on to round 6. In round 6, the Cleveland Browns probably playing a game as well, and they will take on the Pittsburgh Steelers because they're attacking to the east or the northeast. At the end of the first quarter, Cleveland gets on the board with a touchdown to their tight end. And now with 16 seconds left in the second quarter, Nick Chubb at running back, he breaks a big one, 3-2, 
He'll dive down and set up a long field goal. They convert it, and they win 10-7 to claim Pittsburgh. And now we get ready for round seven. And in round seven, the wheel lands on the Houston Texans. The arrow spin points due north, which of course is Dallas. So Houston taking on Dallas. Dallas up 7-0. Houston gets a field goal before the half to make it 7-3. Now in the second half, there's a deep shot, slightly overthrown, results in a pick. Houston stops Dallas, one last gasp. The receiver catches it, he's to the 25, no time left though, and he fumbles. Dallas recovers at the 19, and Dallas takes over Houston. And with one minute quarters, that's some of the randomness that will happen. Now in round eight, the Philadelphia Eagles are going to attack due north, and we have a big matchup as the Eagles are taking on the Buffalo Bills. And Buffalo got an early field goal. Philly looking to respond at the end of the first quarter, and they do with a 16-yard touchdown. Now late in the game, it's 13-7. Philly had a turnover. Buffalo got a field goal and a touchdown on their two drives. But with 15 seconds left, a touchdown and an extra point could win the game for Philly, and they get the touchdown to tie it at 13. The extra point is up, and it's good, and Philadelphia takes over Buffalo 14-13. On to round number nine. The New Orleans Saints will attack um, northeast, which is the state of Mississippi, so they add Mississippi. In round 10, Chicago is going to attack southeast, mostly south, and they're going to take over Kentucky. In round 11, um, Seattle, they're guaranteed to add states. There's no one on any side of them. And they are going to add Idaho because they attack southeast. In round 12, we land on the L.A. Rams. The L.A. Rams will attack southwest. And they're actually going to add Hawaii because Hawaii would be to the southwest. In round 13, we land on the Cincinnati Bengals. The Cincinnati Bengals are going to attack Northwest, and they are going to attack Cleveland because Cleveland is mostly north of them across that entire north border. And early in the second quarter, 6-0 Cleveland, but Cincinnati gets a 37-yard touchdown. They get the ball back off a turnover, and there's another deep strike. This one, a 30-yard touchdown. We're now into the third quarter. 14-6 14-6 Cincinnati, and there is another catch. This one off a of deflection, and Jamar Chase is going wild. Inside the 20, makes a man miss, dances around, forces a broken tackle, and that's a 74-yard touchdown. Cleveland tries to make it close, but Cincinnati wins 28-14, and they take over Cleveland. And now in round 14, let's see. The Washington Commanders are going to attack mostly east. They're surrounded by Baltimore, so they're taking on the Ravens. And in the first quarter, Taylor Heineke hits Terry McLaurin. He breaks a couple of tackles. He's to the 25-20, 15-10-5. No one's going to catch him. He dives for the end zone, and that's a 54-yard touchdown. Now, in the fourth quarter, the Commanders get a field goal to make it 11-9, and they will go on to win 14-9 and take over Baltimore. Now, in round 15, the Kansas City Chiefs, the Super Bowl champs, they will attack Southwest and they're going to hit Oklahoma, which is part of the Dallas Cowboys territory. So the Chiefs will go on the road wearing red, taking on Dallas. They score first. It's 8-6 now in the second quarter, and the Chiefs will score again. Now it's 15-13 late in the game, and Pacheco gets a touchdown to put away the Cowboys 22-13. And now we gear up for round 16 which will see the Detroit Lions attacking for a second time. This time they're going to attack Northeast, and they are going to attack the Philadelphia Eagles. 
Philly is up 6-0. That's a deep shot. That is picked. Not a poorly thrown ball, but there is a lot of coverage. Philly now up 14-0, and Detroit's going to try to get back into things here midway through the third quarter. And with a couple of broken tackles, that is a big 47-yard touchdown. But in a 17-14 game where Detroit needs the onside kick, they don't get it. And the Eagles win 24-14 to take over Detroit. And now we're on to round 17, which sees us land on Las Vegas. And Vegas is going to attack Due West and attack the 49ers. So here we go, Raiders at the 49ers, and there is a slant for a touchdown. The Niners respond, it's a 7-7 game, and with three seconds left in the second quarter, the Raiders set up a field goal to go up 10-7. The 49ers respond, though, to make it 14-10, and more than halfway through the fourth quarter, some broken tackles result in the Raider touchdown and a 17-14 victory. So now we move on to round 18. After the Raiders take over the Niners, the Vikings are going to attack Northeast, and they're going to attack the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles take an early 7-0 lead, but Kirk O'Chains hits Justin Jefferson for a 38-yard touchdown. Philly responds and makes it 14-7, and... With almost no time left in the third quarter, Kirk O'Chains hits the running back. It's now 21-14 Philly. Last play of the game, it's incomplete, and the Eagles win 21-14 to take over Minnesota. On to round 19, we land on the Seattle Seahawks, who still might just get space. They're attacking southeast again, and this time they take over Wyoming. On to round 20 where we land on New England, and New England is going to attack due east, and we're going to give them Rhode Island because there's Rhode Island and Connecticut both open there, and it was slightly south. Now, in round 21, we've landed on Arizona. Arizona is going to attack mostly east, and they take over New Mexico. In round 22, we land on New England again. This time, New England is attacking Southwest, and they're going to attack the New York Jets. So, the Patriots traveling to East Rutherford, New Jersey, taking on the Jets, and they strike first to make it 7-0. Early in the second quarter, they strike again to make it 13-0. Extra point failed. Still in the second quarter, and the Patriots score again to make it 20-0. They end up winning 27-0 to take over the Jets. In round 23, we land on the Chicago Bears, and the Chicago Bears attack Southwest, and they take on the Kansas City Chiefs. What a mismatch. Bears at the Chiefs. But the Bears get the ball first, and are they going to strike for a 30-plus yard touchdown? They do, 37 yards. The Chiefs respond But at the end of the half, the Bears will get a field goal to go up 10-7. It's now 10-10. The Bears' defense holds, but they throw a pick. 17-10, the Chiefs score off the turnover. But late in the fourth quarter, the Bears score. And in overtime, the Bears with the ball, they get the touchdown. And they don't even need the extra point. They upset the Chiefs 23-17 to take over Kansas City. And now... We're on to round 24, and in round 24, we land on Atlanta. Atlanta is going to attack Northeast, and they're taking on the Carolina Panthers. Atlanta travels to Carolina, and in a 0-0 ball game, Atlanta looking to strike first. That's a deep shot. We've had some pretty good luck with those, and we do here with a 41-yard touchdown. 7-7 7-7 game, and right before the half, Atlanta will get a field goal to make it 10-7. Carolina responds to make it 14-10, and a deep shot, slightly overthrown. We thought the receiver was faster. Get the ball back, one last chance. That's caught at the 50. The receiver's stuffed there, and Carolina takes over Atlanta with the 14-10 upset. On to round 25 we land on New Orleans, and New Orleans is going to attack 
mostly north, they're going to take over Arkansas. On to round number 26, we land on Arizona once again. Will they play a game this time? Probably this time they're attacking Southwest, so they're going to take on the L.A. Chargers. Arizona traveling to SoFi, but to take on their AFC counterpart, not their NFC counterpart, they get a touchdown to respond to the Chargers. It's 14-6 here. Late in the third quarter, the Cardinals get a touchdown to make it 14-12. They get the ball back, and a last-second field goal gives them the 15-14 victory, and they take over Southern California. On to round 27, and in round 27, we see our first Florida team pop up, the Miami Dolphins. They're going to attack slightly south, mostly west. They only had one option to attack, though, really, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So can Tua beat Tom Brady? Well, Tua strikes first, gets Tyree Kill for a touchdown. They miss the extra point, and Tampa scored. So it's actually a 7-6 game early fourth quarter. Jalen Waddle scores. It's 14-7, and Tampa misses the extra point at the end. A Hail Mary falls short. So the Dolphins win and advance 14-13. What an ending. In round 28, we land on the Commanders, who of course also have Ravens territory. They're going to attack Southeast, and they're going to add the state of Virginia. On round 29, we land on the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jacksonville Jaguars are going to attack Southeast, and they're going to attack the rest of the state of Florida, which is the Miami Dolphins. So Jaguars at the Dolphins. Trevor Lawrence versus Tua Tagovailoa. Who will win? Well, Trevor Lawrence strikes first, getting Christian Kirk for 28 yards. It's 8-6, and late in the half, Josh Lambeau, I think, is the Jags kicker still. We get the field goal. It's 11-6. Trevor Lawrence with a QB sneak, and the Jags win 18-12. On to round 30. We land on the Denver Broncos, and there's a lot of open space, but a couple of teams around them, they attack due west, and they take over Utah. On to round 31, where we land on the Cincinnati Bengals, and the Bengals will attack west, and they're going to take on the Indianapolis Colts. So Joe Burrow against Matt Ryan. We'll see how this one goes. Early in the game, Joe Burrow hits Jamar Chase. He had three long touchdowns in the first game, and in this game, he's starting out the same way. It's kind of weird that it's raining in a dome, but that is a deep strike touchdown. And now on to quarter number two. Are we going to see more of the same thing? Another deflected catch for Jamar Chase. He's to the 50 the 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. There's a defender in pursuit. 15, 10, 5, breaks a tackle, and that's a 93-yard touchdown. The Colts do respond, so it's 14, 7, but Hayden Hurst gets a late touchdown. The Bengals win 21, 7. On to round 32. The Denver Broncos is what it landed on. Sorry, it cut early. They're attacking northeast, and they take over Nebraska. In round 33, we land on the Commanders. The Commanders will attack southwest, which is now going to be the Tennessee Titans. Commanders at the Titans. And early on in this one, Heineke finds Logan Thomas for a 16-yard touchdown at 6-0. Second quarter, Logan Thomas the target again. He breaks three or four tackles, and that's a touchdown. It is now 13-3, to and the target, again, was Logan Thomas, but that is a pick. Ultimately didn't matter as the Commies win 13-3. On to round 34, where Chicago will attack Northwest, and they'll actually take over Iowa. On to round 35. In round 35, we land on the New Orleans Saints. Will they actually attack? They'll attack Northwest, which sees them taking on the Chicago Bears. So the Saints at the Bears in Chicago. Late in the second quarter, they'll take one shot at the end zone, and they get it. It's 7-0. 
early fourth quarter. They get a field goal. That makes it 10-0, and that's the final. So the Saints take over Chicago. In round 36, the Cincinnati Bengals will attack Southeast and take over West Virginia. On to round 37, where we see the Carolina Panthers. They will attack Southwest, which for their expanded territory gives them Alabama. On to round 38, the Las Vegas Raiders. They spin. They're going to attack north and slightly east. That hits Idaho, which is part of the Seahawks territory. Raiders at the Seahawks at 7-0 in favor of Seattle. And that is a Raider touchdown to make it 7-7. Late in the fourth quarter, the Raiders get another touchdown, and they win 14-7 to take over Seattle. On to round number 40. We're starting to get down there, and we land on Vegas. Excuse me, this is round 39, and Vegas attacking Northeast takes over Montana. Now we're on to round 40, where we land on the Jaguars. The Jaguars will attack Northwest, which is Carolina Panther territory via the state of Alabama. So the Jaguars... Travel to the Panthers, the two 1995 expansion teams. And on the board first via a Trevor Lawrence run are the Jaguars. It's 8-0 late in the second quarter. There is a touchdown to Evan Ingram. 15-3 in the fourth quarter now. And Lawrence will get Christian Kirk. 22-3 is the final. Jaguars take over Carolina. On to round 41. The Washington Commanders will attack attack in what direction southeast and via the most recent takeover that is Jacksonville so the commanders travel to Jacksonville in the snow in Florida I guess that can happen an unlucky bounce results in a pick and the Jags are up 14-0 a fortunate bounce at the end of the third quarter makes it 14-7 Onside kick attempt, the Jags get it, they get a touchdown, they win 21-7. On to round 42, the Jags did take over the Commanders, but now the Bengals will attack in what direction? Northeast, which is Philadelphia. Or sorry, Northwest, not Northeast. But this is a big matchup. Two of the best teams ratings-wise remaining, and the Bengals have a 7-0 lead. That's a poor pick. Now in overtime, it's 14-7 after the Eagles tie it. The Bengals get it. It's 14-13. Zach Taylor's going to be aggressive. Go for the win. Go for two. And the Bengals get it. They knock off Philadelphia in all of their territory, 15-14. On to round number 43. We land on the New England Patriots. They're going to attack in what direction? Southwest. And they'll actually take over New Jersey. So more of these empty territories getting gobbled up. In round 44, the Denver Broncos will attack Southwest. And they're going to take on the Arizona Cardinals. So the Broncos at the Cardinals. Russell Wilson out here going, let's ride. And early on, he gets Jerry Judy, who breaks a couple tackles. In the snow in Arizona, because yes, it snows in Arizona too. Just not on their football field with a roof. But regardless, that is a 60-plus yard touchdown. Now, Arizona scored twice, but late in the game, Denver responds to win 13-9 and take over Arizona. On to round 45, we land on the L.A. Rams, and the L.A. Rams are going to attack East and they're going to attack the Denver Broncos, who just acquired a bunch of this territory. And early on, it was 7-0. Now it's 10-7, and the Rams, right before the half, get a field goal to make it 10-10. Now in the fourth quarter, still a 10-10 game. The Rams on the doorstep. They get a touchdown to make it 16-10, 17-10. Late interception, Rams win and take over Denver. On to round 46, the Cincinnati Bengals. What direction do they attack? They're attacking mostly north, slightly east, 
and they are attacking the New England Patriots because the Patriots are the one team east of them and also north of them. And Jamar Chase continues his heroics. A 30-yard touchdown makes it 7-0. Joe Mixon on the run now late in the second quarter, and he gets into the action with a touchdown. It's 14-0. Now in the fourth quarter, one more touchdown and 21-0. Bengals win. On to round 47, we land on the Jaguars. And the Jaguars will attack southeast, and they are going to attack New Orleans. There wasn't anyone east, so we went as close to the south as we could, which ultimately got us to New Orleans. Now the Jaguars, they get into the end zone. It's 7-0. They've got the ball again, looking for more. Christian Kirk here makes it 14-0, I believe. It's now 14-7. The Jags run out the clock, and they will win 14-7 and take over New Orleans. On to round 48. We're down to the final handful of teams. The Cincinnati Bengals are attacking due south. They're taking on the Jaguars. Now, the Jaguars have had a fair amount of luck. The Bengals have looked really good, but Joe Burrow throws a pick, and the Jags are up 10-0. Do the Jaguars have that luck continuing? Let's see. But in the second quarter, this is a tight end. Look at how fast he's moving down the field. He's to the 15-10-5. No one's going to catch him on a 75-yard touchdown. It is still 10-7. Late third quarter on fourth down, the Bengals will get a field goal to tie the game. And in the fourth quarter, don't go for the onside kick. The Jaguars get a field goal, and the Bengals have 12 seconds to respond. They receive the kickoff. They'll get to the 26, dive forward. And with six seconds left, one last play, can Jamar Chase continue his heroics? He catches it, but he's tackled. Game over. The Jaguars win 13-10. They upset the Bengals, and they advance and take over all of Cincinnati's territory. Now we land on the L.A. Rams, and they are going to attack to the north. And the Rams attacking to the north will take on the Las Vegas Raiders. The Rams will get on the board first with a a 3.5-yard rushing touchdown here. After the Raiders respond to tie it, the Rams go back ahead with a touchdown to make it 13-7. Sean McVay says, let's go for two. They get the two to get 15, and the Rams win 15-13. We're down to the Rams and the Jaguars. The first spin puts us on the Rams. Will the Rams attack an empty space, though, or the Jaguars? Let's see. They're going to attack northeast. And they're actually going to get South Dakota. So now it's around 51. We land on the Jaguars. And the Jaguars will attack in what direction? Northeast. And they will take over Connecticut. On to round 52. The Jaguars are going to attack. And they are going to attack South. Now via Nebraska. They will run into Rams territory, so the Jaguars travel to face the Rams, but they get the benefit of me playing as the Jaguars. We're going to bring you this game in its entirety. This is it. The winner of this game wins Imperialism. First play of the game, Christian Kirk wide open. This is a big gainer. A couple of broken tackles. and Are we going to see a touchdown on the first play? I believe we are a 75-yard touchdown strike. It is 6-0 Jaguars. They'll kick the extra point, and it is good. That makes it 7-0 Jacksonville. The Rams respond at 7-7. There's a full second quarter for the Jaguars to have a lead going into the half. They'll take the touchback. First play of this drive, look for Evan Ingram at the bottom of the screen. That's caught. And he works the sideline for 20 yards and gets out of bounds. On first down here, looking for Zay Jones. Zay Jones gets 13 yards and he's out of bounds. 
It's another first down. And on this first down, Evan Ingram open over the top. He gets a block to spring him loose. He's inside the 10. He fumbles, but Travis Etienne recovers at the 5. First and goal, Jaguars. And from the 5, the hand is to Etienne. Breaks a tackle, dives forward inside the 1. And the Jaguars are looking for a touchdown before the half. The hand is to Etienne. He gets stuffed. So it's 3rd and goal from about the 2. On 3rd and goal, Lawrence hits Evan Ingram. That makes it 13-7. to seven. Extra point pending. The kick is up. It is good. And it's 14-7 Jags at the half. The Rams with the ball. They get a touchdown. They get the extra point. It's 14 all. 21 seconds left in the third quarter. And the Jags will take a touchback once again. On the first play here, Zay Jones wide open. Fumbles recovered by Evan Ingram for a first down. And on first down... There's a couple of receivers going deep. It's going to be Evan Ingram. Big stiff arm, 21 yards, and another first down. One more play in the quarter, and the look is going to be to Evan Ingram again. He is open again. The Rams can't cover him. 22 yards later, they start the fourth quarter at the 21-and-a-half yard line. A deep shot. This one to Zay Jones. He catches it, doesn't fumble it, gets a touchdown. It's 20 to 14. Extra point pending. The kick is up. It is good. The Jags have a seven point lead. Rams get the ball. They march down incomplete and with a big clutch sack from the better Josh Allen. The Jaguars are going to likely just run out the last 14 seconds and win this game 21 14. ATN with the last play, and the Jaguars win 21-14 to win Imperialism. And congratulations once again to the Jacksonville Jaguars for winning Imperialism. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to leave a like. If you're new around here, subscribe for more Retro Bowl content. In the comments, let me know. Should I do a part two to imperialism? And if so, what rule changes or modifications should I make to make this better, more exciting, different, more difficult, whatever it is, you name it. But with all of that being said, guys, MG from Skull Gamer Network. Thanks everybody for tuning in. And until next time, and as always, peace out.